Ike Invest have published, Tesla has launched its robo-taxi. Now what? A $10 trillion market? On June 22nd, in Austin, Tesla launched its robo-taxi service to a limited group of users, beginning the shift in its model from one-time low-margin hardware sales to recurring high-margin revenues. Now that it is scaling, Tesla should be able to meet urban Austin vehicle miles traveled with only 200,000 vehicles, an opportunity that far exceeds today's ride hail market. So before we get any further, my first reaction to this is what the actual fuck? 200,000 vehicles? Are they high or more likely am I dumb? The math ain't mathing here for me. How in the hell does a city of just roughly 1 million people require 200,000 vehicles? Either Ark have gone mad or I'm about to learn something. My modeling suggests a far lower number of vehicles needed to meet peak demand for the entire market. Let's continue. According to our research, Tesla's robotaxi business could represent around 90% of its enterprise value by 2029. By the way, that's a mere four years away. Capturing a significant share of Ark's projected $10 trillion global robotaxi market as shown below. Now, if you're a nerd, feel free to pause. What we're looking at here essentially based on price per mile, how many miles total of demand for robotaxis. E.g., a $1 per mile, roughly 1 trillion miles. 50 cents per mile, roughly 5 trillion miles. It roughly looks like 40, 35 cents per mile in yellow there. 10 trillion miles and then a very long tail. 25 cents per mile, 30 trillion total miles. An additional just from that 25 cents per mile from 10 to 30. So that's 20 trillion miles at that addressable price point. Obvious things are obvious, right? If more people can afford to use transport as a service, they will. <laughs> Imagine that. Competition. <laughs> Good one. And scaling. In our view, 2025 is shaping up to be the year of the robotaxi, with Waymo in the lead thus far at around 250,000 fully autonomous paid rides per week. Our research suggests Waymo's safety has improved around three times since mid-2024 and is approaching the US human accident rate. One accident every 700,000 miles. With launches planned for Miami, Washington, DC and Dallas, Waymo could surpass human safety metrics in the next few quarters. On screen now, Waymo's safety improvement over time millions of miles before police reported collisions. Keeping in mind, obviously, that there may be collisions that aren't reported to police, although with an autonomous vehicle, probably not. Obviously, trending in the right direction. In 2018, that's not far off a decade ago, Waymo began commercial autonomous rides and has expanded <laughs> gradually. That's putting it lightly, extremely gradually. It's like they're wading through molasses. Not being a hater, but just relative to how quickly Tesla's moved. Waymo is moving way more slowly. Expanded gradually during the past seven years. In contrast, Tesla intends to scale quickly with its vision-only end-to-end AI approach, as it illustrated in just three weeks by extending coverage in Austin beyond that of Waymo, even though it is still using a safety monitor. Days later, and four months after its own Austin debut, Waymo expanded its coverage beyond Tesla's, though Tesla responded by doubling its service area, and the two now have similarly sized, but by the way, very differently shaped, if you know, you know, operating regions. With ride hail comprising just around 3% of daily, I'm assuming, vehicle, mile, vehicle miles travelled. Best guess. We'll roll with it. Somebody can let me know in the comments if I've guessed that one wrong. Can't be fucked figuring it out. I'm guessing vehicle miles travelled. In urban Austin, the market is still nascent, underscoring a significant opportunity for robotaxis as shown below. And what we're looking at here, daily vehicle miles travelled, presumably in urban Austin, ride hail, a tiny little sliver here, 3%, and other, the other 97%. Okay, so here's the good part, because this ain't making sense to me. Our research suggests around 200,000 robotaxis supplemented by privately owned vehicles integrated into fleets similar to Airbnb could meet all of urban Austin's VMG as shown below. So taking a look at this, we've got urban Austin robotaxi demand by time of day. You can see peak early morning, people getting to work, comparable peak, people getting home. This dividing line here, the dotted line, is essentially the robotaxi fleet. And everything above this line is the fleet being supplemented by people's own vehicles that are being added to the fleet. Now, I'm really having a hard fucking time computing this. If Austin has, let's just say, a million people, it does, is it really accurate to, that the absolute peak would require 350,000 vehicles operating? Typically, school ends and starts a little bit offset from the typical workday, right? So you, the, I'm just trying to understand how they get to this number. It seems absolutely wildly high to me. Or maybe I am just wildly high. Anyway, we'll keep reading. I'm sure they'll explain why I'm a moron in a moment. That said, the estimate is highly sensitive to average vehicle speed 
and deadhead miles assumptions. Yeah, this is true. Good. They're going to explain. Now, average vehicle speed is important because I was just thinking while well, I was kind of commenting, you know, if there's massive traffic jams, then obviously going to need a lot more vehicles during peak times just to get from point A to point B to pick people up. So this can significantly impact the required fleet size as shown. Oh, here we go. Thank fuck. So now I can understand why I'm an idiot. All right, here we go. Deadhead as a percent of total vehicle miles. And by the way, deadhead means the vehicle's traveling to pick a passenger up or... In other words, it basically means the vehicle doesn't have anyone in it right now. It's still doing miles, but they're not being paid for, right? Empty robo-taxi. Okay, let's just call this empty robo-taxi. <laughs> we've got the average speed in miles per hour. It's levels 14 and up to 30. So we can see here the average speed, if you go from, let's say, 14 to 30, half as many robo-taxis required, and then how often they're empty from none of the time to half the time. So this seems to be how they're coming up with this. What I still see is an outrageously high number. But hey, what would I know? Just some idiot who makes videos on the internet. Still, my gut feel, this, this doesn't feel right. It's so scientific, I know. Anyway, moving on. Importantly, Urban Austin is a fraction of the addressable VMT in the US. If Tesla is well positioned to scale and capture that opportunity. No shit, Sherlock. While Waymo relies on partners like Uber, Jaguar, Zika, and Hyundai. According to our research, the current annual global production of Model 3s and Y could support the VMT of any top 10 US urban market, as shown below. Oh, think fuck. See, I've got these own models, my own assumptions here. I'm looking forward to seeing these from Mark. But I mean, this stuff's pretty obvious, right? Let's say Austin, which is roughly a top 10, maybe a top 7-ish, something like that city in terms of population in the US. If it only requires a few hundred thousand vehicles and Tesla in the US alone is making hundreds of thousands of vehicles per year, and when they start producing CyberCap, they can crank them out at least as quickly. It doesn't take much imagination to realize that Tesla can systematically target and saturate the bigger cities in the US one after another and absolutely dominate the robotaxi market. Think New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Austin, Miami, Dallas. State level regulations could slow deployment, as has been the case in New York City. By the way, rest in fucking peace if things go the way they're looking like right now. If you know, you know. But a shift to federal regulatory framework could be the game changer. Okay, so robotaxi demand by time of day in urban regions. Top line here, ARC estimating, I guess, that Tesla could be producing 4 million cyber cabs per year at scale. Uh, now, this is actually a really good, good chart because what we're showing here, global Model 3 and Y production capacity today. We've also got cumulative hardware for deliveries of Tesla vehicles in the US. <laughs> Arc almost trolling here. They've, all, they've, they've also got Waymo production capacity at scale. It doesn't even register. It's basically zero. And this is shown in context with, let's say, New York, biggest city in the US, right? In green. In other words, Tesla's current global Model 3 and Y production capacity, enough give or take to cater to all of the ride hail demand in New York, the biggest city in the US by miles, pun intended. The point Arc's making here with New York, Miami, Houston, LA, Philadelphia, Washington, DC, Chicago, Dallas, and Atlanta is that Tesla's already producing vehicles globally right now at a scale that would be sufficient to dominate each of these markets. Now, obviously, that's globally. They're not probably suggesting they're going to be shipping vehicles from Shanghai to the US, although you never know. I mean, if it makes sense, it makes sense. But the point here, Tesla already has massive scale and Waymo, apparently the leader in autonomy, <laughs> is producing so few vehicles. Actually, they don't produce any themselves, but via partners that they do not even register on this chart. Do you understand? Now that its Austin and San Francisco launches are underway, Tesla is beginning to enjoy three key competitive advantages. Oh, motherfuckers. Are they going to talk about the same three things that I've been talking about? Let's see here. Three competitive advantages, vertically integrated manufacturing, data and cost per mile. That should position it to expand rapidly across other US regions. Vertically integrated manufacturing. Tesla's vertically integrated manufacturing offers a clear scaling advantage. No shit, Sherlock. Not just scaling, but also cost. While Waymo is working with auto partners to add a whopping roughly 200, I'm just kidding. I was going to say 200,000 and trolley guys, I'm not. <laughs> a whopping 2,000 vehicles to its fleet. I'm going to say that again. A whopping 2,000 vehicles to its fleet, which is currently roughly 1,500, through next year. <laughs> Tesla can produce more than 5,000 vehicles every day. Okay. Waymo is going to add a whopping 2,000 vehicles by end of next year to their existing fleet of 1,500. So what are we looking at? 3,500 vehicles by the end of next year. Meanwhile, Tesla, by lunch today, has produced more than their entire fleet will be, e.g. Waymo's fleet, in the next year. Awkward. According to our research, Tesla's Austin factory alone could produce more vehicles than Urban Austin's entire ride hail fleet in around nine days. I'm getting deja vu because I went through this exercise on a video like a month or two ago. 
talking about exactly this specific factories i literally talked about austin producing a number of days blah, blah, blah. obviously i can i at least on the same page in how you would think about this problem even if their estimates for vehicles required is a bit higher than mine notably this estimate excludes Tesla's planned production of 2 to 4 million cybercabs annually slated to begin next year. By the way, important context on this, in case you forgot, cybercabs are not only designed to be able to be manufactured very affordably and operated very affordably, which is super important, but also at an extremely high rate of output from a very small factory footprint. This is much more important than it seems. If your goal is to make as many of these fuckers as fast as possible, the smaller the factory footprint, the higher density the output and the faster the rate of output, the better. Make them cheap and make them fast. Data. According to our research, compared to Waymo, Tesla gathers around 40 times more miles of real-world driving data per day from its full self-driving vehicles and around 900 times more from its global fleet, as shown below. So I call it two orders of magnitude. Maybe some context would help. Imagine your 200-pound girlfriend. I'm just kidding. I know I don't have one, but if she did exist... Two orders of magnitude larger would not be 2,000 pounds, but 20,000 pounds. That data foundation should enable Tesla to scale more quickly without detailed mapping. Unlike Waymo's geofenced model, Tesla's data spans diverse geographies, enhancing its AI's ability to manage edge cases. Even Waymo acknowledged recently that data and compute are key variables in enhancing the performance of autonomous vehicles. So again, Tesla, roughly 900 times more data being collected every second versus Waymo. Waymo themselves acknowledge that data and compute are very important in terms of actually improving the capability, aka safety profile, of their software. On screen now, daily miles traveled. <laughs> Once again, Waymo doesn't even register on the fucking chart. Awkward, cost per mile. When operating at scale, Tesla's cost per mile could be 30 to 50% lower than Waymo's because it does not rely on other automakers, LiDAR or extra hardware as shown below. And again, this time, Tesla barely registering on the chart because of the extremely low cost in total. And this is important. Tesla will hold all the power in this industry because they dictate pricing. And if they decide to offer competitive pricing per mile as opposed to milk maximum profits, and as we saw earlier, the lower the cost, the more people use the service. So even if you have lower margins than you could have, if your margin's half as much, but you've got 100 times as many people using the service, I mean, hello, it's a win. So much like today with electric vehicles, where Tesla's the only company making any money selling electric vehicles at scale to consumers because they have the lowest costs and are driving costs down and the industry must follow. And as they do follow, they have to lose money to keep selling vehicles. The same shit is going to repeat itself with cost per mile when Tesla cybercabs are at scale. No company will be able to compete with Tesla on cost and make a comparable margin. In fact, it's more likely that Tesla will drive their cost per mile so low because of their massive cost advantage, 30 to 50% lower cost, that no company will be able to make any profit trying to match Tesla on cost per mile. Let me just explain the point. Let's say the high end here, Tesla has a 50% lower cost. Let's say just hypothetically, it costs Tesla, easy round number, $1 per mile, costs Waymo $2 per mile. If Tesla charges, let's say $1.20 per mile, they're making a 20% profit per mile and Waymo's cost is $2 per mile. If they try and price at $1.20 per mile, they're losing 80 cents per mile, AKA, they're totally fucked. I'm just kidding. Everything's going to be fine. Ignore what I said. Waymo is totally a viable business. Highlighting the advantages of autonomous over human driven taxis, whether Waymo or Tesla. Recent surveys show that riders in San Francisco prefer Waymo over Uber and Lyft. And by the way, I wonder why. If your sense of smell is sufficient and or you're a young, hot female who would prefer not to be in conversation with a potential creeper, or you'd just like some peace and quiet, or you'd prefer the driver not be talking to his family via a headset for the entire trip and not paying attention to the road, etc., etc. Obviously, these are not every instance of a ride, but they are common enough that many people would prefer no driver. This means the service without a driver isn't equivalent but superior to human-driven ride hail. Now, the only exceptions here are for extreme extroverts who would prefer to have somebody to chat to on the way, but these are the minority. Late last year, Waymo's market share surpassed Lyft, as shown below and could top Ubers in the next year or so, given their respective trajectories, as it scales its robotaxi service nationally. Tesla is well positioned to undercut competitor price points and gain share during the next few years. Starting chart here, market share gross bookings in San Francisco. Uber, Lyft, and Waymo. Waymo from essentially none of the market to more than a quarter of the market in just a couple of years. Lyft peaking at, let's call it 30, 35%. Waymo now having passed Lyft and got close to the peak on this chart. 
<laughs> By the way, can you imagine what happens when Tesla comes to the party? Holy fuck. Conclusion. Robotaxis are operating and serving customers today. While Waymo took the early lead, we believe Tesla's end-to-end vision-only AI, vertically integrated manufacturing and data advantages position it to dominate in the US and perhaps globally during the next few years. Apparently, there'll be another article on this topic soon. Now, just one caveat here too. You'll note how they say, and perhaps globally during the next few years. There are certain markets that are ultra, 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 ultra low priorities, e.g. China, basically the third world, developing nations, China, Asia, portions, Africa, India. Right now, autonomy, somebody's probably going to do all right there, but in terms of return on investment, biggest market opportunities, cost per mile customers are willing and able to pay. These will be the last places that robotaxis dominate. Major markets include the US, most of Europe, developed nations, Australia, and so on. People here, people there, can pay a few dollars per mile, do pay a few dollars per mile, and use services like Uber taxis very regularly. And you'll note, ARK Invest, believe, like some guy on the internet, that Tesla's not going to take a small or even reasonable slice, but are likely to dominate in the US, which is far and away the world's biggest and most meaningful market when it comes to autonomy. If only I could have known this years ago and been loading up on Tesla stock before it became obvious. Oh, wait, no, that's exactly what I did and did. Huh, okay, no regrets, motherfuckers. Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.